What does that even mean, Bowers Game Cornar? Oh, hi there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review, another special gift starter review. And today I'm very excited for checking out Adorable to Horrible from Plastic Hand Games. This is for two to four players, ages 18 plus, adults only, and it'll take you about 30 to 60 minutes to play. And in Adorable to Horrible, you are going to be drawing cards and playing cards on your opponents that will have various different things on them. Most of them are very sick and deplorable, and if you're not into that, you're not going to be into this game. But if you are, is it worth checking out? Let's open it up, and I'll tell you about it. Alrighty then, we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Adorable the Horrible. Before we get started, I do want to mention this is the promotional copy I have in front of me, so take everything you see here with a grain of salt. So, in Adorable to Horrible, you are going to be taking control, well, actually other people are going to be taking control of three little critters that you have. You might have a kitten, you might have a unicorn, you might have a hedgehog, and there's four different characters in the game. There's the blue unicorn, who is the disturbed one, he's mentally disturbed. The red bunny, who is the perverted one. The yellow kitten, who is the sinister one, because, well, of course he's a kitten. And the green hedgehog, who is the violent one. And uh, that is important because you're going to be having a bunch of cards that will fit thematically with their character, so to speak. And you're going to be trying to push the other characters into this deep, dark pit in the center. Because if they go into the deep, dark pit in the center, they will have 50 points. And you're trying to have the fewest amount of points at the end of the game. The game will end when all three of one person's characters are in that pit down there. So how do you get them in there? Well, it's pretty simple. You're going to have these cards right here. Before we get started, I do want to mention the board. It looks very, uh, very nice. I personally like the artwork, but that is a subjective thing. And there are going to be stones going around in a path. These stones will go from the lowest number of zero, if you're in the clouds over here, to all the way to 50, if you're in the pit. And they will slowly get higher, because you want to stay away from the pit, obviously. You want to be near the clouds. So. In the game, you're going to have three cards in your hand, and you will always pretty much have three cards in your hand. You always draw back up to three cards in your hand, and they're going to look something like this. And uh, we'll go over the different kinds of cards in the game, and then uh, I will show you a little bit how the game is played. So first you're going to have movement cards, which are going to look like these guys right here. They'll come in four different colors, yellow, red, blue, and uh, green, which are the four colors of characters in the game. And when you play one of the cards in your hand, you will play it down. And I highly suggest reading aloud the text on the bottom. And then you're going to move along uh, the player's characters that many spaces. So if you laid down a four yellow, you would be able to move one yellow character four spaces or spread out those four spaces amongst two yellow characters with the goal of dropping them, boom, down into the center pit. Also, you might potentially want to get them out of the clouds because if you're in the clouds, your characters are not technically in play and you can't, they can't be affected by cards. So sometimes it is, it is a better move to get them out of the clouds than to move somebody closer to the pit, but that's a little bit of a gameplay strategy there, so you can ignore that. Another thing I want to mention about the cards right now is uh, this is designed from the ground up to be a drinking game if you'd like to make it so. And so a lot of the cards will have a little beer right there. And if you play a card like that, everyone is going to be taking a drink. So let's just read a card right here. Trippin' hairballs. Ken loves all kind of drugs to smoke and shoot and huff. He says his only drug problem is, problem is he can never get enough. Uh, so as you can see, all, most of the cards are going to have rhymes like that. And I do want to mention that all of the cards are unique. I forgot to mention that in, uh, in the end part. That's one thing I like about the game, is that you're not going to run into cards that say the same things, aside from, you know, like set collection cards like this. So let's start talking about the purple cards. These can be played at any time, and uh, they will do various different things. So this one is a set collection card. It's a purple rainbow. Get two of these and hand them both in. Return to the happy place, free from all sins. So you'll be able to take one of your guys who might be getting close to going into the pit, and now he goes into the happy place, which is, which is great. Uh, but they are some random different cards in there. There's also the dark place rainbow, which is, yeah, the dark rainbow, the goth rainbow, who will knock someone down into the pit. You got this one, the color ectomy. Switch up the color on any card played. So if someone's about to move you down a lot of spaces, you might play that card. Um, so that one's actually kind of a reaction card there. Next, you're going to have orange cards. These ones can be played at any time. However, they cannot be played uh, on a character in the happy place. Switch positions with any opponents. And these ones will generally deal with uh, moving characters or switching characters around. So you can just, if someone's getting close to the pit, if you're getting close to the pit, someone's all the way up here, you can boom, switch it around. 
Last but not least, you're going to get four black cards in the game. And these are going to be, uh, let's see if I can find one real quick. These are going to be ones that some people are going to like or hate. They are very powerful cards that will do very powerful things. Uh, so let's see. Weep Frog, jump any character over the next two below, getting closer to the void, growing nasty as they go. So this one can potentially do a lot of damage with some people. Uh, next, the Brock, Paper, Scissors, Doom, which I think some people are either really going to like or really going to hate. Personally, for the tongue-in-cheek nature of the game, I don't mind it. But really, you're just going to play Rock, Paper, Scissors with someone, and whoever loses goes into the pit. Yeah, pretty bad. 666, six, six. this one's another really big FU card, as they put on there. But this one is going to let you move three characters six spaces. Yeah, so they're going to be getting six spaces closer to death. So, those are the different kinds of cards in the game. Let's talk over the gameplay. You're going to have your three little characters up here when you start the game. You're also going to have this little marker in front of you, in case you uh, forgot what color you are, because you're a moron or you're incredibly drunk. And then you're going to have three cards in your hand. On your turn, you have two options, and only two, not three, two. So, first option you can do is you can play a card and then do whatever it says. You read it out loud. Getting freaky! The sideshow is in town. Bunny heads to the midway. He meets the parasitic twins and has a little three-way. Uh, so yes, you would play this, and then you'd move the red character one space. Now, you may just say, hey, there's not a red character out right now. That is because when you're playing with only two or three players, you take out the cards that will not impact the game, which I did not do uh, for my setup right here. But you would play that, and then you would draw it back up to three, move the space, and bada-boom, move on. However, let's pretend that you are red, and you don't want to play either of these two cards. You don't want to play this card yet. Well, then you have the option to discard a card. So you just put a card into the discard pile, draw a new card, and then move one of your characters one space forward. So it's not a huge penalty, but sometimes you won't be able to play cards, or you won't want to play cards, and you can do that action. Anywho, as I mentioned, you're going to continue to do that until someone has all three of their characters in the dark void right there, at which point you will tally up your points. How the point system works is you want to have the lowest score, and you tally up the points of where all your characters are. So if you're in the cloud, on the four, and in the void, you would have negative 54. Uh, because you would have 0, 50, and 4. Or you would have just regular 54, not negative 54. I'm a moron. So, last but not least, uh, I want to give you more of a feel for what kind of cards you get in the game. So I picked out some of my favorite cards, and I'll just read a couple of them. So we have the yellow run right here, who is the sinister one. Taunting a starving child is pretty freaking shitty. Yet Keaton, Kitten eats his pizza without an ounce of pity. And I like to read them in my preschool teacher voice. Uh, next we have the blue unicorn one. This is my, one of my favorite ones. Go with the flow. Unicorn's on her period. And this one's extra bloody. She puts out her used tampon and mails it to a buddy. Oh, another unicorn. Drop it off the kids. Unicorn cuts the brake lines while all jacked up on meth. Then giggles like a schoolgirl as they plunge to their death. Kitty do voodoo. Torturing his enemies with a poke and prick makes kitten warm and tingly in his little kitty dick. So as you can see, really messed up. Let's see, we'll, uh, we'll read one of the green ones that I actually enjoyed. I'll mention that in the pros and cons. Freewheel and Hedgehog doesn't give a damn about people in wheelchairs, so he decides to help one down a flight of stairs. We'll read one of the red ones. Let's see, uh, we'll do cold cuts. Necrophilia is a word that was long and hard to say. All Buddy knows is he gets to pump his dead friends night and day. So as you can see, um, very offensive humor. Not for everybody, but let's talk about the pros. Let's talk about the cons. Alrighty then, adorable to horrible from Plastic Hand Games. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros. Let's go over the cons. First on the con side, restricted player count, two to four players. This is a big con. I mentioned this for all games, but specifically for this game, because this has the feel of a party game. It's light, it's easy to learn, it's easy to teach, it plays relatively quickly, not the time length, but you know, your turn. You're never going to be spending too much time on your turn. It plays pretty briskly when you're playing, and it's a perfect and they even recommend you pair it up with drinking. So it has the feel of a party game, but it has the player count of a not party game, which is slightly annoying. Also, I'd say about 75% of the cards I found to be humorous. The other 25% were the green cards. They just weren't funny. And, and that was really unfortunate because you read the red cards and those are just consistently funny. The blue cards and the yellow cards are like, oh, those are all funny. And then you get to the green cards and the green cards are just, eh, not that funny. Now, humor is obviously a very subjective thing and I'm not saying they were not funny because they were offensive uh, because I'm obviously not a person who gets easily offended I just didn't find them that funny so if you're gonna play I recommend uh, if you're playing with three players recommend leaving out the greens because they just weren't as funny 
as the rest. Obviously, there's incredibly dark content. Uh, genocide, rape, murder, killing babies, tampons, blood, periods, all that sort of stuff. Penises, whatever. It's all in here, which if you don't like that sort of stuff, well, then I don't know why you came this far in the video. So, uh, other cons that I have with the game. The gameplay is very, very simple, which is going to be a turnoff to some people. It's, uh, it's essentially you've got three cards in your hand, and you're going to play one of those cards, or you're going to discard a card, and that's it. That's all you're going to do. There's some minor set collections here where you're trying to get, you know, two of a rainbow or you're trying to bump people back and figure out how you want to push people forward. But for the most part, it's a very simple game, which is going to be a turnoff to some people. And the last con I have with this game is that this is all the cards they have. Now, this is a good deal of cards, but you're going to go through a lot of those cards, and some of them are going to lose your humor as you progress through the game. So is this a game you're going to want to play all the time, over and over again? No, because then you're going to start knowing all the cards. It has the Cards Against Humanity effect there, where eventually you're only going to laugh at a card a certain number of times, which is unfortunate. But if it gets popular enough, hopefully they'll add more cards to the game, expansions, new characters, who knows? Because, I think I'm done with the cons, moving on to the pros, the humor hits. It hits and sometimes it hits you really hard. It has those cringe-worthy moments where you read it and then you start laughing and then everyone's like, what's it say? And you're like, you read it out loud and then maybe one person in the group is like, oh my god, you're a disgusting human being and then everybody else just starts laughing out loud. The humor really hits in the game, which is not something that you can say for too many games in our hobby. Now, it's not like Cards Against Humanity humor, where you make up your own humor, help wanted humor, something like that. This is a game where the humor is on the cards, and the cards are actually funny, which is very rare. Uh, also, I really enjoy the artwork. The artwork brings these little poems to life, and I love these poems. And honestly, I want some of these cards to be, like, blown up into a poster. I hope this does very well. And they have this additional stretch goal where they will add a pledge level where you can get these into posters. Because some of these posters would be spectacular. They should be doing web comics with these characters. Uh, really enjoyed it, aside from the green character. Uh, all the ability... It's easy to learn, easy to teach, and I feel like this is going to be a very niche game. It is because of its player count, it is because of its content, it is because of its simplistic mechanisms. But, that being said, if you're in the market for a game like this, I can absolutely recommend this game because it is funny, as long as you're not overplaying it, and it is simple, it's enjoyable, it's a great game to have a, have a couple beers, sit back, have some fun, and you know, feel terrible about yourself. So adorable the horrible, simplistic, very offensive, very crude, but still a lot of fun if you're in the artwork for this sort of thing. If you like Munchkin, if you like Cards Against Humanity, if you like games of that ilk, definitely recommend checking this one out. So, that is Adorable to Horrible from Plastic Hand Games, one that I can give a recommendation to, dot dot dot. Hey, I stole that from Barry. If you enjoyed this review, please be sure to click on the subscribe button down below in the comments below. Let me know what is the animal that you are most terrified of. And yes, you can throw in arachnids and bugs and all that sort of stuff. For me personally, it's bees. And not just one bee. Like, if I see a bee, I'm not scared. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll pretend. I'll try and catch it, actually, so my kids can see it. But if I see a nest of bees, you better bet I'm getting gtfo in. Is that a word? gtfo in. G-T-F-O-I-N-G. I'm getting the... Oh, I can say it. I can get the fuck out of there. Because this is an adult review, I can say that. Uh, but yeah, bees, for me personally. But what is an animal that you are most scared of? I guess I'd say wasps, because they can sting you over and over again. What's the animal you're most scared of? Let me know in the comments below, as always. Thanks for your time, YouTube.